Okay, let's get started. In the next 10 minutes, we'll learn to install and configure the Avicode event database used by SE Viewer in our SE Log system. What's happening is you'll install the SE Viewer and SE Log, as you see here. That'll actually get deployed into an IIS instance running ASP.NET 2.0. So it's basically a website and a web service. It's going to listen to events being collected from out in the systems that are being monitored. It then stores that data into what we call the SE Viewer database. Obviously, you can name it what you'd like. And that database then will submit information into another data warehouse for reporting capabilities. We'll quickly walk through how to configure and set up that SE Viewer database, point out some of the differences in setting up the advisor data warehouse, even though that's not part of this 10 minute setup. During the install, the final stage or the final step, it'll ask you, do you want to start the configuration utility? You simply can go through the start menu, all programs, access the intercept studio directory and under intercept configuration you'll see several files there a number of which are simply the xml files we store our configurations in but you'll also see something called se viewer configuration utility starting the utility now gives us a obvious couple of questions we have to answer right we have to decide for example the database that we want to be communicating to is it going to be a a full SQL Server or the Express Edition. Once we decide on that, we have to tell the system exactly which server hosts the database. So is it locally? Is it running on this system? And then we want to name the database. So here we'll accept the default of SE Viewer. Once we have those basic questions answered, now it's a decision of how are we going to connect under what security credentials? So we have a choice. Obvious choices are if we're in mixed mode running on the SQL Server, I could use a, a SQL Server specific user. So I can actually tell the system that I want to create this user and then I can type in a password that I want that user to have. Doesn't mean it has to be there, but it just means that's what I want it to be. Or if we're not in mixed mode and we're running in integrated security mode on a SQL Server, obviously that would be our choice. Just a quick kind of how-to, would you find that out? Just for those of you who might not know, you can open up the SQL Server Management Console. You can see once we have that open, connect to the correct database server. Once we're there, we can right-click on the database server's name and properties, and we can go to the security tab and that'll tell us here for example we're running both sql server and windows authentication mode so it's mixed mode for us simply differences being is the user that we're going to create would be the user that's stored in our connection string in our configuration if we're running in mixed mode obviously whatever instance that the applications are running under that are going to communicate to the database, those user credentials need to have rights to that database. And we'll go over that in a second. Once we do that, it's fairly simple in what we'll do. Here I'll change the database name and we'll test that connectivity back. And as expected, that database doesn't exist. So I get the warning message that the configuration failed because the database doesn't exist. It's asking me now, do I want to configure the database? And if the user account wasn't created, do I want to create that? And here I'll just simply say yes. Takes me to now the, the utility that's going to make the database for us, as well as any user scripts or user configurations I need. Now here when it asks me, for a username and password or use integrated security. This is for the administrative rights on the SQL Server. This actually has nothing to do with running the Avocode SE Viewer. This is simply the user that has rights to create databases and change security credentials on that SQL Server. So obviously, if you're logged into the test system as the administrator that's also has the administrator rights over SQL, you can use the integrated security because that would be your credentials.
Next step is to make that connection using that security, and then you'll see that there's a few changes that take place. It doesn't need to create the login. If it did, it would have actually created a script and put a checkbox next to that. So it's basically saying that this login exists. First time installs, it won't, so it'll actually have that. It says that it does want to create that database, and that makes sense since I changed the name, it doesn't exist. And then it wants to give that login the correct grants or rights to that database. There's something that you want to change inside of any one of these scripts that it's going to run. For example, if you want to change the database location or database size, you, you can do that. Here's the actual scripts that are going to run to, to make that happen. Same with the granting rights. And then at this point, all you would do after the connection's made and it tests for those scripts, you would simply click Execute, and it'll go out and it'll create that database. And depending on the type of server and obviously the version of SQL, this could be fairly time-consuming. But what it'll do is it'll make those changes inside the SQL Server instance for the user, and then it'll give that user the correct rights and credentials for that database. So you'll see that inside the actual script panels, things certain to run, it'll tell you it's creating a certain database rights and stored procedures and everything that it needs to do, and then it'll finish and let us know that it created that successfully. We can at that point close that out. And now for all intents and purposes, we actually have two databases now, SE Viewer and SE Viewer 1, since I went ahead and created a second one. You can go into the Enterprise Management for SQL Server, and we'll actually be able to see that. If I were to refresh the screens, see now we've got SE Viewer and SE Viewer 1. So here what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and detach this database, or actually take that database offline. purpose of that is I want to actually show you one of the, not gotchas, but one of the things that you may see when there is a database issue related to SE Viewer. So when you want to run SE Viewer and you're on the local system, it would be again in all programs, go into Intercept Studio, and you can now open up Intercept SE Viewer. I'm simply going to go to the local host and pull that up since I already had it running. So here we'll just do a quick refresh. So once we have that database offline and we do our refresh into the structured event viewer, you'll see what we have as a error page or a red message or red page of death that says that we can't make the connection or there's a problem. And of course, everything that we'll reference to will always take you back to the event viewer on the local system so that you can see what exactly took place. The majority of time, matter of fact, I would suggest almost all the time, when you see this message, it's a database-related issue. SE Viewer can't communicate to the database. To confirm that, you can simply go into the the event log for the local system. And we create our own intercept event log, and that's where you'll actually see an error message that states what the exact problem is. And this one's pretty straightforward. It can't communicate to that database. So instead of bringing that database online, we'll use the configuration utility to simply make a change, go back out to the original database, You can see that it's going to test that configuration and create it. And that's all there is to it. And go back to the system, click the retry button, because refreshing the page just simply refreshes the error message. And there we go. The database is back up and running. So hopefully that wasn't 
too painful to walk through the 10 minute process or how to in under 10 minutes. So uh, 